Hello, and again, welcome to Bit Depth. I'm Santiago Ramones. Across from me is... Sable. Hi, I love you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, since by the time that this episode comes out, yesterday will have been future past tense. Uh, no. What? No, if you're releasing this on... The Thursday yes. will be on Tuesday. Hmm? Oh, yes. The 12th. <laughs> yes. So, uh, no. how? 14th. Hmm? 14th. Let me go ahead and pull up a calendar here so that I can be very, very sure about it. Pretty sure it's on yes, Tuesday. Yes, the 14th is a Tuesday. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> then, <laughs> yes, two days before will have been our eight-year anniversary of whenever we, like, I don't know. What would you call that? We didn't really, like, start dating, but... No, I guess <laughs> just whenever we met and whenever we, like, started, started talking. Like, talking, is that well, the term? You started talking to me. Yeah, afterwards. well, okay, so... Backstory! Yeah, yeah, well, first let me say that, like, uh, I at least wanted... I thought it would be cute, and uh, it's also the... Uh, people have asked for, like, I don't know, relationship advice of me because we've been together so long. Mm-hmm. I've been asked as uh, well by a few people. Yeah, and so uh, not a lot of people our age make it to eight years in a relationship. So nope. I figured uh, some people would want to know some stuff as to how we... Uh, have gotten through all of this. <laughs> so, for starters, how we started. Yes. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and explain the, like, age thing. Sure. Um, so, Sable is five years older than me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's a lot less problematic now that we're adults, but... Uh, it was a little weird whenever we were younger, eight years ago. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyways, so whenever I was a freshman, mm-hmm. you were a freshman. Yep. <laughs> we were freshmen together. Right. But of different school <laughs> calibers. I was in high school. Yeah. Um, so um, the way that I knew Sable was through... A uh, marching band through Brianna, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it that, was like through your brother. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was through. But Daniel, I also knew your but, brother. Yeah, before but I knew you. Y'all weren't like friends or whatever. I was a section leader. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> For like at least two years. Yeah, but y'all didn't like hang out. Nah. So. Not really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you hung out with Brianna. Mm-hmm. Um. But Daniel hung out with Brianna, and so that's how that, like, secondhand Ish. thing goes. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> well, um, I would sort of, like, hang around and try to get to know the older kids uh, because it's cool. Uh, <laughs> and um, I, I guess I, like, saw you at, like, I don't know, like a football game or something for Mm -hmm. marching band because you were, what was it? that? Success Central. Okay, yeah. Volunteer. We had to do volunteer hours or something. And so teacher was like, pick a place, go do volunteer work. And I was like, oh, do we have to? Of course, this is like a blow-off class. Right, no, everyone has to take that class. Yeah, I think I knew a few people that just didn't take it at all. Sure. But I was like. I didn't either. Yeah, like you (laughs) Mm -hmm. or Matt. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just decided, well, I'll just go ahead and go back over to North and mm. help out there, help out the band moms and stuff like that. So I was like mm. that alumni that helped like with water, with getting any equipment, with, you know, the food bars, you know, whatever. Yeah. I was also mainly there to see like Brianna and Amy and like my old friends that were younger than me. Yeah. Um, so I think... Like, going back in my mind, I think one of the first moments that I remember, like, 
noting you. Mm-hmm. Um, Excuse me as I adjust. That's okay. Um, oh, God. Was whenever, uh, like, during a football game, you were, like, throwing Nutri-Grain bars at people. <laughs> and I was like, hey, look at me. Is it one of those, like, in your head, like, the slow motion, like, with, like, blurry, no, no, sparkly background, <laughs> like, something do, like... Do, 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 do. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Tchaikovsky. Um, so, but yeah, so I was like, ooh, I want to get to know this girl. She seems like, I don't know, uh, I was kind of an emo kid. You, like, kind of looked like an emo kid. <laughs> like, hey, I could, I was interested. Um, and then so, like, band parties and stuff. Yeah. Um, there, oh, we had gone no. to other, uh, so, I mean, band parties are just uh, a bunch of band kids get together and grind on each other oh, in the dark. I hate uh, that. Uh, I regret <laughs> it now. Like. I don't. I do. Just, uh, I don't because that's how we started. <laughs> I also just uh, that word. To be, to be young and uh full of hormones and want to uh, have physical contact with anything that moves. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, I don't know, like the second or third band party that I had gone to was at our friend Chris's house. I know we talked about this. Was Chris's before or after? Sharon's Char- 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 was before. Sharon's was before? <laughs> yeah. Okay, because I definitely remember it was at Chris's is when we yeah. started talking. Yeah, so uh, at Chris's band party, Chris wasn't even in a band, he just hosted the party. Uh, <laughs> I, like, made it a goal of mine to, like, I don't know, pursue you. <laughs> um, and so, like, I tried dancing with you a lot more or whatever. Um and tried to be, like, impressive or whatever that means. Uh, <laughs> you did your whole, like, fall and catch yourself, like, yeah. push-up position thing. Yeah, well. I remember that very distinctly mm-hmm. and just being, like, petrified because I was like, oh, God, he's going to hurt himself. <laughs> no, I'm pretty good at that. Um, no. Well, I didn't know then <laughs> as I do now. Um, so it doesn't phase me nearly yeah. as much. So then after that, um, I had, like... Or, like, the day after I, like, texted Brianna asking mm-hmm. for your number. Um, so, from that point, what was <laughs> your point of view, I guess? Um, okay, so, to set the, the stage, if you will, Brianna and I were down here downtown at the Riverwalk. We were meeting up with, like, this guy that um, we had met. He's, like, one of those guys that sells, like the sausage and cheeses that you see like for like winter time at the Mm -hmm. malls because i had to like go talk to a stranger for like another project in success central (laughs) um it was like one of those things where it's like break free do stuff so it it was weird (laughs) that was also where i had to like take photos of like the asian market or something i don't know anyway so he was way more interested in Brianna and so he had set up technically I guess a date to like go to dinner with her but she Mm. still being a minor she was like scared because this guy was probably like my age at the time sure so she's like will you come with me so I was like okay so we come down here anyway um we were in Midwest City at the time because that was when AzumiCon was going on yeah and so we just decided to go after that anyway since it was on the way back and mm. that's when she does her typical Brianna laugh. And mm. then she blatantly is like, hey, Sable, what is your number? I yeah. Like, what? She's like, give me your number. And I was like, who's asking for it? And she's like, she, she was just, of course, teasing. And then I figured out it was you. Yeah. And I was like, is it Santiago? And she's like, maybe. And I was like, okay. So I gave her my number to give to you. Mm -hmm. You started texting me, and you did the whole, like, oh, like, guess who this is? But I knew who it was, but I played along with it anyway. Yeah. Um, And so, like, the rest of this continued, I guess. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) um, Along with uh, other uh, great adventures or whatever. But, uh, 
after eight years, right? Yeah, after eight years, um, I was actually talking to my friend Caleb last night, mm -hmm. um, and I ended up saying this cliche thing in that, like, because he was talking about, like, oh, with a relationship, you have to, like, tolerate the other person's, like, BS. And I was like, I don't really think if you if you have that perspective it because i don't have that perspective mm -hmm. uh, i don't i don't think i have to tolerate sable's bs it, it's more that like oh maybe this thing is inconvenient for me but i care about her so much that i'm willing mm -hmm. to do whatever it, it's not putting up with anyone's bs i was gonna say i don't even know if it's like a bs rather than like maybe a quirk sure exactly and those and those things i love mm -hmm. it's it's not like oh there's these imperfections and i guess i'll just overlook them it's just like no i just love everything about you i'm more <laughs> in love with you today than i've ever been oh and that's like love the you. cheesy like marriage thing but like i it's true <laughs> um fair enough so like uh, one of the things that we had said that we were going to talk about here is, um, I guess, a, a sort of ground rule that people should establish whenever thinking about a long-term relationship with someone mm -hmm. is uh, knowing your non-negotiables. Yes. Um, what's a non-negotiable? It's been, like, forever since we talked about these. Right. Um... I guess still definitely one for me, and this is just... Well, I mean, like, what is a non-negotiable? Oh, like okay. Uh, non-negotiable, at least, like, to my standpoint, is, like, um, you can't negotiate, like, to do something different. So if I'm very particular about something mm -hmm. that maybe, like, you or someone else isn't used to, like, it's kind of like this is my rule in yeah, a way. Yeah. Yeah, like, not so harsh, but, like, a non-negotiable for me is, like, um, take your shoes off if you're going to lie on the bed. Right. And that's just, like, with it's, anyone because the, I'm a German Yeah, film. yeah. That's, like, a simple thing. But, like, even a, a greater non-negotiable, uh, like, I, I would say it's these are requirements that you have for your own life mm -hmm. that if you're going to be in a committed relationship with someone they have to be okay with these things. Yes, that's a better way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of how to explain it. Um, so, like, what's one of your important non-negotiables? For us as a couple? Yeah. Well, just for yourself, for your own life, that this is something that I will not, like, this is something I require for my own life. Mm -hmm. And if you're not okay with that, then we're not okay. Uh, definitely art. Um you know more than anyone that my like end goal as a career is a character designer mm. and so that's like I'm not going to break away from that I mean obviously you know I'm going to come to like jobs that won't be character design but like mm -hmm. I'm not going to suddenly just be like give up after x amount of years and then be like oh I'm just going to do this job instead right like something that's just awful <laughs> yeah you know? um and so that's something that um for a relationship mm -hmm. it, it's not even so much like oh okay i have to be okay with your desire to do art mm -hmm. it it becomes even more active in the sense that like i have to i want to strive to make sure that I do my best for you to succeed in that. Mm -hmm. um, because that's the thing. Like, every relationship has to be mutual. We have to have each other's goals in mind. Mm -hmm. um, rather than the sort of passive, like, oh, okay, they're just going through their thing. Like, mm -hmm. because we, we have to help each other. That's sort of the agreement. Exactly. <laughs> it's a partnership. It's, yeah. It's not so one-sided. Like... Because I want to equally help you with music and where you want to go. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that, like, I know, like, you really want to do video games. Mm -hmm. 
but I also understand like along the way, like there might be other things that yeah, yeah. you can use your talents for. Mm-hmm. And so, but like, I want to help you get to where you want to be too. Yeah. And so like speaking hypothetically, if we were dating other people and, you know, I, I get to know someone and I'm like, hey, look, I play video games. I love video games. And if we're going to be together, like, you're going to have to deal with the fact that mm-hmm. I love video games. And if she's like, uh, no, I hate video games. We're not having that in our house. And it's like, cool. Well, we just won't be in a relationship. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. You and I have already talked about how we want to have, like, the multi, like, display for all the consoles yeah, that course. we have. Even if we don't <laughs> play them, they're, it's going to be there. Yeah. Um, and so that's something that, like, for, for people to have these really important tenets of their life, um, if they want to be with another person for the rest of their life, mm-hmm. then they have to make sure that the other person is on board. And so if one person wants to have kids and the other person doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, then that's something that will be very difficult in the end. Or if someone wants to travel the world and the other person doesn't, then one person's going to have to, you know, throw away their dream in a way. Yeah, it's it is a discussion. I feel like a lot of couples need to have at some point, regardless, like if they've known each other for like two weeks or like Mm -hmm. two years or longer. You know, um, I think I've talked to a few of my friends like I've talked to Megan. I've talked to Ray about like you should consider having that conversation with your significant other and, like, just kind of get that, like, feel for each other. Yeah. So then that way, like, they, like, your significant other knows, like, where you stand, but also so you know where they stand. Mm -hmm. Because, I don't know, I guess, like, if, I mean, you and I had this discussion, like, two years ago. Sure. But, like, it's it's still nice to, like, have and be able to look at and see where we've grown after all Mm -hmm. the years especially now that we are older and we are needing to adult in our <laughs> lives now, me especially, since I have my own place. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it is kind of like eye-opening and you start thinking in a different perspective than when you're younger. Yeah. And, you know, as Megan had called it, the uh, honeymoon phase, if you will. It's mm-hmm. like when you start out. Like, your mindset's completely different then exactly. than you are later in life. Yeah. And, and that brings me to another point in a relationship before I guess if we're doing like major tenets in like a stable relationship one is discussing your Mm non-negotiables the other is um adapting to changes Mm -hmm. um whenever uh, uh, Chris Ryan I quote Chris Ryan a lot but like uh whenever you're in a relationship with someone for such a long time it's it's not really a relationship with one person over time. Mm-hmm. It's a relationship with a series of slightly different people. Oh, yeah. And so, like, to look at the person that I was three years ago, five years ago, eight years ago, mm-hmm. those are completely different people. Mm-hmm. And Same for me. Yeah. And so, whenever you are in a long-term relationship, you you have to acknowledge that, like, we're growing as people and whenever changes happen, however gradually or sudden, Mm -hmm. that we have to adapt and grow and care for the other person as they, for one, feel out these changes Mm -hmm. and uh, sort of need support through the changes. Yeah. Um, I mean, one kind of big struggle that we had is whenever I... Uh, the the word came out. Uh, I came out as an atheist. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, basically, you left the church. Yeah, yeah. I'll just say that as well. Um, because you still like I know you're atheist, but like you still believe in the morality of like a lot of religious beliefs and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, that was probably like the biggest hurdle we've ever faced Mm -hmm. and I mean even when we first started out like like you said we weren't dating but Mm -hmm. like when we first met that was probably like our first big issue because of the age Mm -hmm. and everything yeah but 
Um, yeah, definitely whenever you talk to me, like, after church and how you told me, like, you just don't know where you stand anymore. You don't know if you believe in God anymore, all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, And that did hit me. And, like, we can briefly talk about this, I guess. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean... Uh, like, not to, like, try and be like, oh, like, I don't want to talk about it. It's more just my concern for time. <laughs> right, no, we're... We're fine. Okay. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on the time. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Um, But, yeah, um, I guess from my standpoint, I just remember feeling, I don't know if betrayed is the right word, Mm. but, like, definitely, like, hurt and just kind of, like, in shock because I had just gotten done with RCIA. Mm -hmm. I got confirmed, um, had my pilgrimage if you will yes yeah, like yeah. some some <laughs> of the students I called it uh since I got to visit uh Rome for mm-hmm. school and that was a huge like kind of spiritual thing for me mm-hmm. ironically enough I'm like on Facebook I've been seeing like the memories of this day and a lot of it is like stuff I just openly put on my status about God and everything and how like really into the faith I was mm-hmm. I kind of look back on it like kind of reading it and I can't even read it anymore. Mm. Like looking at it because I'm like, that's a completely different person than I am. Yeah. Yeah. Now I can say like, I'm not really sure where I stand Mm -hmm. with religion at all. I, I want to say I still believe in God and maybe he's there or some sort of sentient being, but I'm really not sure. Mm. Um, but I mean, I, I understand why you left Mm -hmm. because I was even kind of of that mindset. And we've discussed about it before. Right. It's not the church itself. It's more the people. Oh, I mean. Or at least on my part. That's how I still feel about it. Mm -hmm. And I know yours is more like science based. Yeah, but uh, I can explain that in a different context. But at least (laughs) our relationship as a context uh, in that. Uh, I acknowledge that um, I've influenced your spirituality mm-hmm. uh, you quite a me bit to the church at first. Yeah, um, and I don't regret it. I don't regret. Mm-hmm. I don't regret anything. Uh, <laughs> I don't regret you ever doing it. Like I'm glad you did. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just we're in a different place now. Yeah, yeah, and um, but you also wanted to. Yeah. (laughs) Well, okay. It was kind of more of a combination of, like, I don't know where I am right now in my life, but at the same time, like, I really wanted to, like, impress you, impress your family, and I wanted to make you guys happy, and since I wanted to be a part of your lives, and church was a big part of your life, Mm -hmm. like, I was like, well, I'll give this a try. I still remember going in, like, the first time to a Catholic mass and Mm -hmm. just being like, oh, God, I feel like they can all tell that I'm not... Christian or that I don't go to church (laughs) but like I was just like feeling so petrified thinking Mm -hmm. like oh god I feel like they could like just see everything even though I haven't done anything bad it's just Mm -hmm. like I'm not one of you I'm sorry yeah even though like my parents have or at least my mother has always claimed that we're Christian we just never did anything Mm -hmm. so (laughs) anyway (laughs) um yeah but so we we've adapted and grown and sort of gone through these changes and sort of become more okay with Mm -hmm. where we are spiritually. Um, And I think for for myself, um, I still encourage you to, like, pursue whatever it is that you want to in Christianity or whatever context. Mm -hmm. Um, And I... I hold that outside of my own view of like, no, I don't believe in or particularly like religion. But I I also think that... uh, Well, you also, and what I've really like appreciated that you've done, like, I know it was also kind of a struggle even afterwards, like getting through it all. Um, Like you still come to church with me. Mm -hmm. I will admit I haven't been to church in... A while, but that's due to work at this point. Sure. Because I can't ask off on Sundays. Right. But, like, of the times that I have been able to go, Hmm. 
you've been able to go with me unless like something else hadn't come up. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So I've always really appreciated that. And that's kind of like you putting yourself second Mm -hmm. and putting like what I love or like my faith or whatever first. Yeah. So it's kind of like a selfless act. Yeah. Which is something you should do as a couple. Yes. Be selfless. Um, And that brings me to another point. Uh, so again, marking our markers here, uh, (laughs) discussing your non-negotiables, adapting to the changes, Mm -hmm. and then, uh, being for the other person. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, again, talking to my friend Caleb, but, uh, I was, uh, because we ended up talking about relationship, relationship stuff yesterday. Mm Um, but I... I've seen that a lot of the culture that has come through, like, dating, um, especially through, like, Tinder or Grindr or whatever it is that you're doing. All the apps. Uh, yeah. Uh, through all of the, the dating apps is that, like, you you scroll through people and go, I like this thing. I want this person. I want... And so it's sort of like this... It's based this, off of, like, appearances, isn't it? Yeah. In a way? But, but then also just, like, people's descriptions and what they but say on their profile. Right, right. And and so whenever you scroll through someone else's profile and you go, ooh, I want this person. I want someone who's taller than me. I want someone who's uh, into skateboarding. I want someone who blank, blank, blank. Mm -hmm. And so it's like you have this list of requirements that you want to fill for your own goal. Mm -hmm. And then the other person has their list of requirements that they want to fill for their own goal. And so whenever you end up going on this date, it's, I have this expectation of this other person. I Mm -hmm. want this from you. I will admit, um, I, (laughs) I do remember having a list of like, I guess my requirements, but that was back in high school. Right, right. And like, I never dated really anyone until mm-hmm. my senior year. Yeah. Full of mistakes, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember, and of course, being, you know, the kind of emo ish, tomboy ish girl back then, I had certain requirements, I guess. But like, honestly, kind of looking back at it now, like, I feel like you do fit most of them. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, so it worked out. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you had that um, growing up at all. I guess sort of, but like, (laughs) not, uh, I'm not too picky, I guess. Uh, (laughs) Also, like, whenever you are a desperate teenager, uh, Anything that is interested in you is worth pursuing. <laughs> um, at least from that dude's perspective, that me 10 well, again, years ago, whatever. We've discussed this where it's like, it's like a nice kind of ego stroke when like someone is interested in you and yeah, you yeah. kind of show that. Um, like, But I guess in the same way, you have to also be attracted to them because if it's like, you're getting attention from somebody, mm. but you're not attracted from them, then it's just creepy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so it has to be mutual. Yeah. Um, yes. Very important, the idea of mutual stuff. Yeah. In that, and, it, and if not mutual, then at least understood. Yeah. So, like, at the bare base of a relationship, you know, if you're going through the Tinder thing, like... In order to actually have a real relationship, you have to be invested in the other person. Mm -hmm. You have to want what the other person wants. Um, My uh, oldest brother, Jesus, uh, he thought of an equation for love. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's sort of like a question in a poem, I guess. Uh, But it, it goes... I want what you want, but I don't know what you want. What do you want? Mm -hmm. And so it requires that both parties be interested in that because for, for me to want what you want, you know, hopefully they'll want what I want too in that by telling me what they want, Mm -hmm. then they're giving me something that I want. 
<laughs> um, so l- love has to be mutual. It has both, both or however many parties are involved. I don't know, I, whoever is into that uh, have to be involved in that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have to care about the things that the other person cares about. You have to have make their goals your goals too. Mm-hmm. Um, and if there's some discrepancy in there, talk about it. Yeah. Um, Always communicate. Yes. That's another big thing. Yes. The fourth, the fourth tenet. Uh, like, just talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still on the, the third, like, mutual thing. Uh, mutual, and if not mutual, understood. Yeah. Because, so... Um, my favorite band is Radiohead, mm-hmm. and I really love Radiohead, and I like can talk about Radiohead all day. So uh, what you've kind of used as your guide for your own style, like I've always known you to kind of mm. be influenced by Radiohead and Death Cab and mm. all of them. Um, but like, you don't listen to them. No, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and you don't really care for it. And, like, well, that that hurts to an extent, but, like, at the same time, like, I'm okay with that. I don't understand. I understand that we're not the same person. Mm-hmm. And, like, sure, we can have different interests. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just a weird person. I have, like, weird taste in music anyway. So, like, it has to be catchy to me. Mm. But, like, I can even get annoyed easily by, like, catchy music. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean... I acknowledge the differences and tastes or whatever, and I also acknowledge that, you know, Radiohead can be really catchy or sometimes can be really annoying. It just depends on what you like, but, like... I mean, you can also even say, like, um, I know you don't watch it nearly as much, but I know, like, you like Rick and Morty. Mm. I can't stand that show. Sure. I'm going to have a lot of people hate me, but that's fine. I can't stand it for the artwork. Mm. And as an artist, it's kind of, like... I don't know if grotesque is the right word for it, but like, it's just not my style yeah, yeah, that I that's prefer. Fine. Yeah, so I'd, that immediately turns me off to the show. I didn't play Borderlands because the art style kind of bugged me. Mm-hmm. Um, As a weeaboo high school student, <laughs> like if certain manga didn't look right, I wouldn't read it. The story was probably wonderful, but I didn't read it because yeah, it looked exactly. awful. <laughs> yeah. And so mutual and if not mutual, understood. Mm-hmm. Uh we don't have a mutual love of Radiohead. No. Um, but that's fine. <laughs> like, I understand, and you understand that I like Radiohead. Mm-hmm. And... Oh, yeah. Fine. I always pay attention to, like... Um, there's still, like, this pen. It's uh, the astronaut from one of the album covers. It's either Death Cab uh, or it's Brand New. Is it? Okay. <laughs> They're all the same to me. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I saw it, and I was Stab like... in the heart. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I love you. I love you. Uh, I remember seeing, like, an enamel pin, and I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure that's, like, the astronaut from the album cover. Mm-hmm. And I think I remember showing it to you, and you said it was. Yeah. And then I looked further into it, and they said it was, too. So I was like, yeah. hey. So yeah. it's, like, stuff like that. So, like, I might not listen to it, but, like, if I'm somewhere and if I see something cool that's mm-hmm. related to them, then I'll be like, oh, hey. Yeah. Babe would like this. Yeah. <laughs> we keep each other's interests in mind. Yeah. Um, and it becomes especially helpful whenever buying each other gifts or whatever, (laughs) but like, um, and then I guess another thing would be like understanding the love languages, but we'll get to that. Uh, (laughs) communication. Yes. Um, I would almost say that's like my number one thing. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's the number one thing Mm -hmm. that like, it doesn't matter if it's a romantic relationship or a friendship or a co-worker or family like Mm -hmm. you have to communicate um so I don't know uh what was the last time that I did something that bugged you uh (laughs) Hmm. um I can think of one like a really long time ago. Hmm. Uh, I think we were just like out shopping or something. And like you would like 
grabbed my shoulder and pulled me aside or like pulled me away from like, I don't know, people were around. Um, and I was like, hey, please don't grab me and push me around. I don't know if you remember that. But I, I don't. remember that. Um, but like, you were like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. And like, that, that was just like a simple, silly thing, but it's just like, hey, I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. And I made it clear that I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. And so it's fine. <laughs> I'm just thinking because, like, we do that to each other now to make sure that we don't get smacked right. by something. Sure. Like, it's just out of, like, pure, like, muscle memory, I guess. Yeah, but instinct. I mean, we, we've gotten past that point. <laughs> I just remember that a long time ago. And the, that must have been, like, when we were, like, first starting. Sure. Um, or something. But even I still. <laughs> Even still, like, uh, being just willing to communicate through silly stuff like that, Mm -hmm. but then really important stuff. And so... Right. um, I know there's been countless times where, like, maybe you did something or said something and it bugged me, but I never communicated about it very mm -hmm. well. And I'll go ahead and just get on my soapbox about this. I'm definitely the person, like... Before I met you, I've always just been the really quiet one. Mm-hmm. Um, I had, like, a small group of friends before college that I had, like, pretty much through high school. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we ever really, like, talked to each other if yeah. there was ever any confliction or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, Conflict. Sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> but definitely through just our, like, relationship... I always, like, still kept that where if something bugged me, I just kept quiet, but I would always be distant, like, distant from you. Mm -hmm. And you would constantly ask me, like, what's wrong? Talk to me. And I still just wouldn't do it until, like, hours later. I mean, I'm still kind of that way now, but not nearly as bad. Mm -hmm. I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, like, I feel like I'm I'm becoming more blunt (laughs) with you. Yeah, and I'd rather have that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, I will say, like, I guess it also comes out of just being comfortable around you Mm -hmm. to the point where, like, again, we've been together for so long that we've just become used to each other. And so it's like if something's bugging me, Mm. I'm just going to flat out say it either right there in the moment or if you give me like 20 minutes to cool down. Because that's also just how I am. I have a bad temper. Yeah. (laughs) And and so... Yeah, it, be willing to communicate, and I, I appreciate bluntness, and other people might communicate differently, mm-hmm. um, but you can communicate about how you communicate. <laughs> um, but, like, if if not, if something's wrong, it's always better to deal with it right then. Mm-hmm. And if you if you can't right then, if you're still, like, too wrapped up in the moment or whatever— at least communicate and say, I don't want to talk about this right now, but we can do this later. See, that was even still even an issue for me. It's like, even if I was still wrapped in it, I just wouldn't say anything. Yeah. And I know that was kind of like another another hurdle that you and I went through. Mm -hmm. And like, I know it's kind of like a learning curve for you just like to try and understand how to handle when I'm like that. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was more like for my sake because I'm that person where it's like, this is my own shit. I got to deal with it, basically. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't want you to have to worry about it. And so I tried to handle it on my own. But I guess, like, everything would get wrapped up and, like, just it became a mess in my own head to where I just kind of shut down and I just stayed angry. Yeah. But, like, again, over time, I'm still learning. Mm-hmm. But, like, especially with you, if there is something that bothers me, whether it's, like, something you and I have done you or I have done Mm -hmm. or like just something in general. Like we watched a Markiplier video. It was like one of the try not to laugh ones. And Mm -hmm. there was something that really took me over the edge. Mm -hmm. And I like, I just had to say it. I was like, okay, this literally just like makes me want to like crawl out of my skin. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, So like, I'm, I'm still learning, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's just something that I've always yeah, dealt yeah. with. But, like, I know over the years it'll get better and better. Mm-hmm. Hopefully I can, like, use that with, like, 
friends and family. Yeah. Because that's still an issue. I think it's just... When you get to know someone and you're with them for so long, eventually, like, you just... You feel comfortable enough. It's kind of like... What is it? I think it was, like, Jexa and the the other queens were talking Mm -hmm. about, like, how you can, like... um, like read read the other girl, yeah, and they don't feel insulted or like hurt. Yeah. It's like being able to like call like your best friend a bitch, but mm-hmm. like she not get mad at it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. You know, yeah. it's like that. Guys I, are usually really good about that. Yeah, so <laughs> like I guess in a way I haven't been able to be at that level even with like my closest friends mm-hmm. or with even my family. Yeah, you know. So, but like with you, like I'm definitely at that level. I would. I hope. <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah. If you feel that way. Yeah, no, I and I am, and I, again, I, I would rather have brutal honesty than beating around the bush and nothing getting resolved. Mm-hmm. Um, and that could just be the way that I am, and I just like solving problems as soon as they happen. I like solving problems. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the fastest, easiest way to do so. It's just dealing with it right away. Right. That Um, was so foreign to me back then. (laughs) You know? Yeah. I think also, like, thinking now, I do agree. I like trying to get it done and out of the way in the moment. But I think it's also trying to find that right moment. Mm -hmm. You know? So, like, if there is conflict, how do you handle it then? Like, whether or not you see that person that often or if you do see them often enough, but, like, trying to find the right means because you don't want to come across as yeah. one way because mm-hmm. you don't know how they'll act and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's, again, it's finding that comfort mm-hmm. in with the other person. And you have to be willing general. to be open. Yeah. I think that's, like, another really big thing It's just the mm-hmm. openness about it and understanding where the other person is coming from mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, if there's anything that you get sort of, like, queasy about or, like, I don't know, sheepish about that, oh, I, I'm not really good at talking about this. Can we not do this right now? It's like, cool, understood. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot better to just understand it that way mm-hmm. than trying to put it off and ignore it and beating around the bush and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, communication. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Uh, what was the other thing that you had? Oh, uh, or that I had said. Love languages. Yes. Um, there's this book. Uh, I, I don't like remember. Five of them. I don't remember the author, but yes, there's. Um, Damn, I still have that book. Uh, I borrowed it from somebody. Yeah. I don't know if I still have it. If it belongs to one of my girlfriends, I'm sorry. Yeah. I might still have it, unless you <laughs> have it. It's okay. Then okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so help me out because I never remember all of them. Uh, gifts, uh, touch. touch, quality time, access service, and uh, words of affirmation. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, cool, I didn't remember all of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you definitely remember them better than I did. Um, so, like... What's uh, yours? Let's, let's do this. Let's see, like, what each yeah, of yeah. is. Um, and then we'll talk about the others. I'm probably definitely... Uh, uh, touch, mm-hmm. uh, quality time, mm-hmm. and then either words of affirmation or uh, acts of service. I kind of lump those together because words of affirmation kind of you know, is an act of service, but whatever. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, yeah. words of affirmation, I have a podcast. I talk to people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess, like, it's fair to say, like, everyone kind of has that, even if it's not, like, their, like, main mm-hmm. love language. Like, to have that, I mean, everyone wants to hear, like, I love you or, like, I'm proud of you or right. like, encouragement, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I would definitely agree with, like, touch. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not, like, a super touchy, like, handsy, touchy person, no, whatever. but, I'm, but I'm like. A hugger. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we always hold hands and everything, like, mm-hmm. when we're walking or just if we're near each other. Yeah. Uh, so, I definitely agree with that. You're, I'd say that one's probably definitely <laughs> the top one. I was, sorry, I had, like, a thought and then it went away. Um, what about yours? <laughs> 
Um, well, I was going to say, like, you're definitely more in, like, the touchy one, whereas I guess I'm not as used to that. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, like, I don't mind if people that I know personally, mm -hmm. like, will lean on me or, like, hold hands or whatever. Right, right. Um, definitely mine is gift giving. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I'm just a really generous person in general when it comes to people I care about. Mm. So, you know, that's, that's always been the big one. Um, I would say maybe acts of service mm -hmm. probably is a big one. Yeah. Um, and. Service touch. <laughs> God, now I'm trying to remember all of them. What was the other one that we haven't talked about? Um, we haven't mentioned Of that. yours? No, um, just like in general between the two of us. Oh, uh, quality time. Oh, is that that one? Hmm? I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I would say quality time. I mean, I know, and I kind of want to like maybe map this out at some point in the podcast if we have time. Um, I remember when obviously we first started out, we mm -hmm. were pretty much seeing each other almost every day. Yeah. Um, we always wanted to be around each other. And then eventually as time grew on, um, we got used to the idea of not seeing each other so mm -hmm. often. And like, even now, like to this day, since we are very opposite ends of <laughs> like where we live, not s literally, but I mean, 45 minutes away from each other yeah. at this point, mm -hmm. you know, I do really appreciate when we can see each other. Yeah. Like now. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Or, like, just if you can come over to, like, my neighborhood for, like, just games or something. Mm -hmm. You know, especially, like... And when, I never mind doing... Yeah. <laughs> well, you said that you love driving. Yeah. Listen and to podcasts. I listen and to podcasts. <laughs> you can listen to this podcast while you're driving. Um, meta. No. <laughs> uh, I'm always meta podcasting. Oh, my God. But, yeah, no. Um, definitely now I really appreciate it just because, like... Or, like, even if you randomly decide to show up at my school, like, mm -hmm. once I'm done, like, yeah. I always love that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I know it's not as, like, easy now since your old house is, like, literally close to the school week yeah, at yeah. any time. So, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and we've we've kind of had a struggle, sort of still have a struggle with um, gifts is that, like, Mm -hmm. It's not one of my love languages, and it's one of yours. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I'm not very good at gift giving. <laughs> um, no, I had to usually hint at you. Like, <laughs> and, like, or at least just show you, like, the stuff I'm interested in, in hopes that you kind of understand, like, what I like. Yeah. Um, but I'm also, like, a stingy-ass person, so <laughs> I, like... Yes. I, I don't... Because I'm so stingy <laughs> and... Uh, Okay, I, uh, I always give very practical gifts. Yeah. And, um... No, I think that's slowly rubbing off on me, like, the practicality of things. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, I still love to give, like, little things here and there that are just fun that I feel mm -hmm. like, oh, I like this person would like this, whether it's with yeah. you or with anybody else. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I made my mom one of those teacup candles from yeah. my girl's day, just because, like, I feel really bad that, you know, I'm not at the house anymore and I know she's going through a lot. Mm -hmm. Does she need it? No, but she really appreciated it. Yeah, exactly. And and that's a style of gift giving that I'm less good at. But because of you, I've sort of gotten that perspective and gotten a little bit better at that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think one of my favorite gifts that you haven't given me, but you tried to give me, was <laughs> from last year. The mm -hmm. frog from New Orleans. Oh, yeah. Um, it still makes me smile yeah. anytime I think about it. Yeah. Like, I don't physically have one, but, like, <laughs> the idea of it just, like, I don't know. It's, like, something out of a friggin', like, romance movie or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, well, it's it's it, it, <laughs> it's even more odd now that it's become, like, greater than the thing itself. <laughs> um, so, quick story. Um, last year, we went to... Uh, you and your family. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> myself, Daniel, uh, and my parents, because Zeus wasn't able to go, mm -hmm. um, went to, we took this long trip. We went to, we drove to Road trip. Key Largo, um, but we, we stopped through Memphis, mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta. 
Atlanta, Birmingham, um, and then stayed at Key Largo for a couple of days. Um, went down to Key West, did some scuba diving. Uh, it was like our first scuba diving experience, mm-hmm. or at least mine. Um, then we went back up and went through New Orleans and stayed mm-hmm. in New Orleans for one night. Or uh, Was it during Christmas? Yes. It was on Christmas when we were at New Orleans. Right. Um, and so my goal, I guess, because one of one of our, like, movies, I guess, the, the one that you and I sort of really connect with uh, because of when we watched it at that point in our relationship. Well, that was, like, our first movie that we, like, went to go see together, right? And like, our first Disney movie. But, like, yes, as, like, a date, I guess. Date. <laughs> first date-ish, maybe. I don't um, know. We never really, like, dated, so. Um, we but, just became what we are. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so Princess and the Frog was, like, our first, like, it was, it's special to us. Um, yes. And so since I was in New Orleans, I was like, I have to get her a frog, like, charm or pendant or pin or whatever from New Orleans because this is, like, that means so much to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, I, like, went on a rat chase to, like, <laughs> rat race, goose chase, uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Something. A rat goose mutant chase oh. race. Um yeah. To uh, <laughs> uh, to try to find uh, a frog charm or pin or whatever, and we just like couldn't find anything. Anything that we did find was like kind of crappy. So like I was just like, it's not what I wanted. Or if there was anything, it was like crazy expensive, and so like just couldn't end up finding anything. And like I can't remember. Like I probably got you something else anyways but um you brought me a hat from the the restaurant that uh, you went to yeah but you brought me the jellyfish pendant oh yeah that that was from key west yeah um but i ended up and the red poster yeah well that was that was from the internet (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but um yeah i think it's grown to be more than the thing itself because I never got you the thing itself but just more the idea of trying to do so (laughs) yeah and I love it and it's it is like the thought that counts literally Mm. like and even you just talking about it like you see me like I was just smiling (laughs) about it because I think it's the sweetest thing in the Mm. world and I love you for it um and I love you um but and I mean I also appreciate it whenever you give me really practical gifts because it shows me that you understand the kind of gifts that I like. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, we've just gotten a lot better at that. Um, Since time is a factor, um, what, um, is there anything else that you want to add as far as relationship advice or whatever? (laughs) Um, I have always said this ever since I can remember, even before I dated you, don't rush into things. Definitely take your time, get to know the person. Mm -hmm. This has also been an experience for me where, uh, if you want to call him a boyfriend or whatever, um, a relationship I was in, I met the person through a mutual friend. And, like, basically that night we decided to become a couple, I guess. Mm -hmm. Hit me hard when he broke up with me because, like, I guess he technically cheated behind my back. Mm. Um, Flirted with one of your friends? No. um, Or is that a different? I don't know who you're talking about. (laughs) Um, No, he, like, basically, like, was hooking back up with his, like, Uh, Mm ex-girlfriend after he said to my face well not to my face I guess like sitting next to me I would never cheat on her Mm -hmm. he did Mm -hmm. um do yeah just don't rush into things I've heard and I understand that everyone's like is in a different place whenever they're dating people Mm -hmm. I get it but to make something successful to make it long term if that's what you're seeking like just be patient 
get to know the person, mm -hmm. like have them be like your friend first, yeah. you know, and then maybe it might form into something later. You yeah. never know. Like, just don't rush it because then you're going to lead to more heartache. You're mm -hmm. going to lead to more regret. Um, you know, yeah. because, you know, we were both, well, you raised on Catholic and then I've always just been this way in general. We've never wanted to like sleep around or anything with mm -hmm. like each other or like our past relationships or whatever. Yeah. So like keeping yourself like pure and just have no regrets. So mm -hmm. when you do find your person that you want to be with for the rest of your life, yeah. like you feel good about it. Yeah. Um, you don't have any of that quote-unquote luggage as a lot of people or baggage as people say yeah yeah um if and with that being said if you're gonna be in a long relationship there's gonna be kind of many stages as i've kind of like looked back on there's the honeymoon phase mm -hmm. uh which is when you're first starting out you're head over hills in love with the person mm -hmm. like the sappy gushy crap that mm -hmm. made people sick you know kind mm -hmm. of stuff you want to always be with each other yeah all over each other whatever that probably lasts for about i'd say two years mm -hmm. one and a half years to two years yeah then i feel and i've kind of seen this with like a few friends where like by your second year is where you're getting out of that phase out of the honeymoon phase and you're slowly kind of transitioning into a more mature phase. I don't know, like, yeah. what you want to call it. Because well, you get to, like, a routine. Yeah. Because I remember when we hit our two years, that was kind of rocky at this-ish. Mm -hmm. um, you might reach a point where, like, you're tired of the other person or... That or, like, you're finally starting to talk about more serious stuff mm -hmm. and that's when you're starting to be like, are we compatible or are we not? Mm -hmm. and, the non-negotiable kind of stuff. Like, we didn't yeah, talk yeah. about non-negotiables then mm -hmm. in our two years, but, like, it's kind of like that point where it's like, okay, we, we've we been together this long. Maybe we should start actually being serious. Mm -hmm. um, three to four years, I think you're still kind of ironing out everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, by the fifth year, you're kind of like, okay, am I going to be with this person for the rest of my life or am I just kind of here mm -hmm. kind of thing? It's like, yeah, yeah. because, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like maybe at some point in our relationship, the spark, if you will, was kind of not as present mm -hmm. for us. And maybe it was just yeah, like yeah. a lot of life changes mm -hmm. just in both of our lives mm -hmm. with everything. But like, it's kind of at that point, it's like, okay, do we... Yeah. That's the routine that I was talking about a little early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, okay, like, do I want to be with this person? Do I not? Mm -hmm. Do I try and find somebody else? Yeah. And again, that's also like where you don't have to rely like on a physical mm -hmm. relationship. Like that's because then if it if that is all your relationship is, then I mm -hmm. feel like you're not going to get as satisfied yeah, in yeah. it in the correct way that I. Th think you should be in yeah yeah because be emotionally supporting each other mm -hmm. and i don't know practically supporting each other as yeah. well well also like just have conversations with each other like mm -hmm. about anything like i and i know a lot of people will think opposite of me but i'm not one to where it's like be in a relationship just for like the intimacy part of it like mm -hmm. what i really love about ours is like we can sit and have conversations even though, like, I myself am not the most intellectual on, like, certain topics, mm -hmm. we can still have discussions, and I can mm -hmm. give you... you. <laughs> I can give you different viewpoints on stuff. Yeah, and even though you say you're not that intellectual, uh, you always, like, bring up points that I have never thought about. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've always enjoyed about our dynamic is that I'm very sort of um, structure-minded science and math. Yeah. Um, by comparison to the way that you're a lot more organic and um, nature-oriented. Yeah. Like, we are very opposite in mindset about stuff. But mm -hmm. we do come to, like, a conclusion or, like, a mutual agreement on a mm -hmm. lot of stuff. Yeah. Like, I don't think we've really hit that point yet mm -hmm. where, like, 
just our viewpoints on something has been so like against each other. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think we've really had that yet. Yeah. I mean, I know we haven't had like the huge talks about certain things Mm -hmm. more for my sake, just because of my mentality of it. I Mm -hmm. do want to have them. I think I'm getting to that point where I'm okay with it, but Mm -hmm. like death or I'm awful about politics. So Mm -hmm. that may or may not ever happen. I don't know. Just because I have absolutely no idea. about it. (laughs) Don't talk to me about politics, anybody. (laughs) Um, but I mean, I, I'm still open-minded about a lot of stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. Certain things I'll, are like non-negotiable to me, but like other things I'm willing to listen. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, okay. Sure. (laughs) Um, yeah. And then I, I think another quick point to make before we, uh, pack up uh is the uh consent mm-hmm. is important um yes i know it, it's it's hard to uh bring this up in a quick point but like um even though we are in a relationship and we have certain agreements we still have to like verbally or in some way communicate like hey I want this thing or I don't want this thing. And sure, it consent is usually used in a sexual context, but like um, in lots of other contexts too. And so um, if I'm leaning in to kiss you or whatever, and, you know, maybe a long time ago before we like had kissing on the table or whatever, uh, not kissing on the table, but... (laughs) (laughs) um, we have to sort of like understand that of each other. It's like, oh, is this okay right now? Mm-hmm. Um, you and still do that now. Like, yeah, if yeah. I've been really upset about something. Yeah, exactly. If we've had an argument or something, mm-hmm. um, oh, that I do have another one. <laughs> Go on. That I'll, you know, we're leaving or whatever. It's late, and it's like I understand you're still kind of upset, you're still winding down, but can I kiss you? Mm-hmm. And I always make sure to ask before I just like ambush you with my face. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, but what was your other point? Um, it is perfectly okay if you're in a relationship and you have arguments. Yeah. Um, I don't think we talked about that at all, but I think if you've been in a relationship and you don't argue or you haven't, like had like a fight i don't Mm -hmm. know if we've had fight fights we've definitely had arguments Mm -hmm. but like um it's okay like sure in the moment we're like upset with each other i don't know if we've flat out been angry with each other or mad not quite um maybe like close but not to the point where it's like i'm just like completely done with you Mm -hmm. i've given you the silent treatment before even through text but it's okay. Like that's also where communication comes in and you talk Mm -hmm. about it later once you've Mm -hmm. pulled off. Yeah. If you don't have those, I do kind of worry that something's wrong. Yeah. That there's some stuff that you haven't Mm -hmm. talked about and there might've been some disagreements and it's like, eh, we just won't deal with this right now. Yeah. And the more that you do that, the worse that that'll be later on Mm -hmm. is that they start to pile up and then, you can be like, oh, well, I don't like this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. Yeah, it just becomes a list of stuff, like, grudges you have against that person that you just hang on to. Mm -hmm. But also, like, if you argue, obviously, too much, Mm -hmm. then there is a a compatibility issue. Yeah, there's some reason to think as to why you, maybe there's something fundamental in your relationship that you should work out, and Mm -hmm. not everyone's perfect for each other. I'm going to quote something from my lovely hairdresser Ray because I love her mm-hmm. she said something whenever she like last talked to me about relationship stuff and mm-hmm. because she was asking me for a friend literally a friend not for her mm-hmm. um she she had said something that really struck me and she said you should be with someone that makes you shine mm-hmm. like where you, you can look at that person like someone can look at you and be like I can see that love Mm -hmm. because of your significant other. Yeah, yeah. Like, they make you better. Mm -hmm. They're there to, like, be your support. But also, like, and for me to add to it, to be your best friend. 
yeah. I consider you my best friend in mm-hmm. the world and we do everything together. We joke, we laugh, we cry, everything. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and I think that's like something that should be a goal for people. Yeah. Like literally you're marrying your best friend, mm-hmm. you know, like is eventually like if that's what you're about. Yeah. You know, or you can kind of like Jenna and Julian, like I know they're best friends, but mm-hmm. they live together. They're not married, at least mm-hmm. as far as I know. Sure. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess to review, <laughs> have you been listening, kids? Um, uh, Wake talk, up. <laughs> talk about your non-negotiables. Um our second point I'm already losing track of these things uh, were you paying attention <laughs> I'm the one who made the attention uh, talk about your non-negotiables uh, out of order communicate love languages um, mutual mm-hmm. mutuality is that a word um, and then consent consent yeah um, either way Go back and listen to all of this again if you need that again. Take notes. Uh, <laughs> um, Tell yeah. us what we talked about. <laughs> um, yeah. Do subscribe. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you for doing this. Of with course. Me. Um, <laughs> sorry we didn't have more time. That's okay. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. It's fine. Um, where can we find you and your things? Uh, you can find me mainly on Instagram right now at Sable and do you believe it is an underscore yes. creations. Uh, you can find majority of my artwork on there and just random photos mm-hmm. if I'm feeling like it. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to mainly do art right now. But mm-hmm. We'll see. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah. yeah. And then your Etsy store is of the same name. Yes, just it is. I do have Sable and creations <laughs> on Etsy. I do have a link in my Instagram yeah. bio. Go there, buy stuff, please. I have only two items out right now. I have mm-hmm. a pin if you want to support the um, Standing Rock tribe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sumix? Is that how you pronounce it? See you. I don't know. <laughs> it's all there, I promise. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. Um, go support them um, either through the link that I sent or you can purchase one of my pins that I have designed especially for them mm-hmm. where I send 75% of all proceeds go mm-hmm. towards the tribe to help yeah. them in any way, shape, or form. Um, yeah, you don't do none of these chump percentages for charity. You do, like, a big chunk yes. percentage. Yes. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, also, like, helping a starving artist. Um, yeah. Then I do have another item that's to help support my local zoo. Uh, they're little animal charms. They're just toys that are painted gold just because mm-hmm. they look nice. They do look really nice. I love how those look. Oh, thanks. I wouldn't uh, wear them myself because it's not really my style, but. <laughs> that's fine. They're a little too feminine. But, yeah. Um, I think I I don't even remember the percentage I have on that. Right. Because well, no one's bought any yet, fine. but that's fine. Buy them. Buy them, please. Um, but, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> keep an eye out for when I start selling prints, hopefully soon, and maybe mm-hmm. some Christmas stuff soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Where can we find you at? Yeah. Uh, well, hold on. Let me do the, the thing. Again, thank you. I'm Santiago Ramones. And I'm Sable. Uh, you can find everything that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. I have music. I have this podcast. You can find my music through my website. Um, I have stuff that you can download or buy on Bandcamp. That is Songs With Words Demo or Red. Um, You can pay $0 or you can pay $1,000. I don't care. Uh, But, you know, you can download and see what kind of stuff I make. There's also my, like, composery stuff on my SoundCloud. I always end every podcast with my three things, sort of shape my life philosophy and everything that I do. Those three things are Love Never Fails, It's going to be okay. I might be wrong.